your worst nightmares. Grasping claws, gnashing teeth, so many terrible eyes in the darkness. Just when you thought it was safe to play Roblox, you enter the endless terror of doors. You can check into this hotel at any time you like, but you can never leave. It's just another room. That's all it is, just another room. You try to tell yourself that as you stand at the entrance of the Grand Hall. Lightning cracks outside as the rain hammers at the tall windows. You've made it through more rooms than you can count. You've done it all before. It will all be okay. But this isn't just another room. When you step through the doorway onto the soft red carpet, you are walking into a space you'd never seen before. You'd been trapped in this hotel long enough, running through door after door, to know that you're never truly safe here. It feels like the walls are always watching you. And right now, they really are. Black slime creeps up through the cracks in the wood paneling, opening up into wide, crazed eyes that stare right at you. And right there, in the middle of the carpet, a pool of inky black slime starts to bubble through the red. You take a step back in fear. Do you run? If so, where do you go? There's nowhere to hide in here. And that thing is bubbling up between you and your next door. You've got to turn back. But something in you, call it morbid curiosity, roots you in place. A hand shoots up out of the slime on the floor and grasps a handful of carpet. Straining and twisting, the arm flexes, dragging the foul shape of a human out of the darkness. But it is no human you've ever seen before. Its name is Seek, and you can immediately see why. With one massive eye where its face should be, it's immediately fixated on you. With long strings of goo flying from its limbs, Seek sprints right at you, arms extended. Now, it's definitely time to run. You spin around and sprint back the way you came, feet hammering on the wooden boards. The rooms you run through don't look the same as they just did. The lights are almost all out, flickering in terror as eyes open and close all along the walls. Dozens of them stare at you as you desperately try to get out of here. Your only saving grace is guiding light, illuminating the right doors for you to run through. If it wasn't for that, you would have been caught already. Room after room flies past you until, all of a sudden, you crash through a door and feel a wave of heat on your face. You're in that same open hall that Seek appeared in just moments ago, only it's so much worse now. Fire burns across most of the ground with only narrow gaps around the edges for you to run through. But that's not what terrifies you the most. The tall windows have been shattered, broken glass littering the floor, as enormous black distorted hands reach through from the storm outside, swiping and grasping at the air, reaching towards you. You want to turn back. You want to stop. But the thudding footsteps behind you tell you that Seek is just a few feet away. You make a break for it, running towards a gap in the flames just as a hulking black hand swings down in front of you. The fingers grip you and lift you off your feet, slamming you against the wall before dragging your limp body out into the night. Your vision goes red, then fuzzes to black. You were almost there. Stay away from the hands next time. Panting, you find yourself back in the elevator. You've lost count of how many times you've found yourself trapped in here waiting to start your run. But this time will be different. The message had been right. You were almost there. You look at the items for sale in front of you. Vitamins, lockpicks, lighter, or a flashlight. Which one will you choose this time? You decide on the flashlight. It is pricey, using up all your money, but you figure it'll be worth it. The vitamins sure do look appealing. They could heal you, make you run faster even. But you've decided already that this time you won't get hit. If you can possibly avoid it, that is. The elevator dings and the door opens into the hotel lobby. It's empty, calm, and quiet, with a roaring fire in the corner and no possibility of danger. How you'd love to just sink into one of those armchairs and go no further. But what good will that do? Would you rather be trapped somewhere safe or die trying to escape? You certainly know which one's best for you. So you run over to the front desk and crouch under the bell cart. 
The key is hanging where it always does, on the hook behind the desk. You snatch it up and duck back under, standing face to face with room 0001. You take a deep breath and set off. The rooms in the hotel are always randomized. You never know what's going to be on the other side of each door, but you've run it so many times now that you recognize most of them, even if they are always in a different order. The first few are never too challenging. You could practically run them with your eyes closed. Room one is just a boring old open room. A couple of wardrobes along one wall and two sets of drawers on the opposite. You slide the drawers open as you run past, checking for anything useful to pick up. Nothing. The next room opens with a staircase leading up to a hallway. Door number three is right there at the far side of the room. Nice and simple. How you wish the entire hotel could be this straightforward. And for a while, it is. Rooms four, five, six, and seven all go by easily. Just little hotel rooms, corner corridors, and a couple of open spaces. You tread carefully, ears on high alert, but so far, it seems pretty safe. It's only when you run into room eight that your heart starts to hammer in your chest. If you were less seasoned in here, you wouldn't have noticed it. A slight flickering of the lights, but you've been here enough times to pick up on even the smallest details. You stop running, taking a split second to listen, and sure enough, you hear it. A low-pitched scream. You've got to move fast. Looking around the room, you spy a wardrobe, all the way on the opposite side. It's going to be close, too close. You take off running, fast as you can, across the room, heading straight for it. The screaming sound grows in your ears louder and louder, until the room itself starts to rumble from it. You reach the doors just in time, pulling them open and diving inside, just as the door you've come in from slams open. The lights go out, and the screaming sound fills the room. A dark shape rushes past the gap between the doors, racing through the room, and just as suddenly, it's gone again, and the sound is just a faint echo, as Screech flies through the hotel. You've died to Screech plenty of times, not noticing the lights flickering until it's too late, not quite making it to a hiding spot in time, confusing it with one of the other monsters that roam the halls of this place. But you've learned from your mistakes, and you're determined not to see Screech's creepy smile ever again. You quickly step out of the hiding spot and move on. It's dangerous even to stay in one place for too long around here. You learn that the hard way when Hyde threw you out of a wardrobe for standing in it too long. Even in the safest hiding places, you are never truly safe. Dusting yourself off, you take off running once again. Room 15 is a puzzle, but an easy enough one. The first time you encountered a room like this, you found yourself stuck in here, wondering what you could do to get the next door to open for you. But now you recognize it immediately. Paintings line the walls, all in different shaped frames. Only the frames they're in don't match the faded marks on the walls behind them. Somebody, or something, has moved them all around. Not a problem for you, though. Grabbing them one by one, you put them each in the correct places before the fireplace at the head of the room dutifully slides down to reveal the hidden door behind. A bookcase falls over in the next room, making you jump out of your skin. It's harmless enough, but that scare always seems to get you. After that, you get stuck searching through several different rooms, going through desk drawers, looking for keys to unlock the next door. Room 23 is dark. You hate these rooms most of all. With the other rooms, at least you can see what you're in for. You can spot your exit, or at the very least, you can see somewhere else to hide. But in the pitch black, you truly are on your own. Time for the flashlight. You click it on and stare out into the open space. It's a large room, too big to simply run straight through. It's going to be a challenge here, one that you are not excited to face. You flick the light off and start running hesitantly into the unknown. You need to conserve your battery. Also, sometimes it's better to die without seeing the horrors that you're facing. Mercifully, you find the door quickly. Anything to get out of here as soon as possible. You quickly switch the flashlight on to check. Room 21. Perfect. You grab the handle and turn. Darkness and a grinning face. A screaming noise fills your ears as dupe grabs you, pulls you close and then throws you back. You feel your head slam against the ground. So much for not taking any damage. Of course Dupe was there. You were in room 23. The door to 21 was obviously a fake. 
The sign even falls to the ground as if to mock you. You've got to do better than that. You continue along the wall, finding your way to the real door, and you press on. Distortion fills your ears in room 36. You were wondering how long it would take for Ambush to show up. There's a wardrobe right next to you, which you dive straight inside. Just like Rush, Ambush flies past you, traveling through the room at breakneck speed, but rather than getting out of your hiding spot, you hold your breath and stay very still. Sure enough, Ambush turns and comes back again. You feel the force of its presence shooting past you, just feet away from where you cower, then again and again. Your unease builds. It won't be long before Hyde kicks you out from inside here, and if Ambush is still around, you tense up, waiting for Ambush to leave. It's normally gone by now, but it reappears again. It can only appear up to six times. Surely, it'll be gone. You feel yourself getting thrown out of the wardrobe by Hyde. You land sprawled in the dark room. This is it. If Ambush comes back now, you'll be dead for sure. You close your eyes and wait for the inevitable. But it doesn't come. You were lucky there. You just hope you haven't used up all your luck just yet. In room 40, you find Seek again. The same open hall with the eyes opening on the walls and the black goo appearing on the carpet. But you refuse to let yourself be scared this time. This time you know what's coming. Spinning around as soon as you can, you run back through the chaotic rooms behind you, crawling under fallen bookshelves and following guiding light as best as you can in your panicked state. The footsteps pound behind you, but you refuse to look back. You're not going to let yourself be caught this time. The hall appears again, full of hands that swing in front of the windows reaching for you, but you duck under them, skirting around the fire. The door gets closer and closer until you crash through it, and it slams behind you. Muffled fists hammer at the wood, but it holds. Seek is behind you, for now. Room 50's doors are different. Ornate double doors block your path. Here goes nothing. You open the doors into a grand library with flickering lights. You would stop to admire the room, but the horror that reveals itself from around the pillars makes you stop. It's an enormous humanoid with long, gangly limbs, ribs sticking out of its chest, and a head that is just one giant round mouth full of sharp teeth. You stand frozen in horror. This thing is going to kill you immediately. You've got no hope of getting through here, none at all. It ambles straight towards you, but then for some reason turns a corner and disappears among the bookshelves. Strange. It was looking right at you. Wait, looking, of course. It can't see anything without eyes. It must hunt using some other sense, probably hearing given that it didn't smell your fear straight away. As figure lurches around the library, you tiptoe your way among the shelves as quietly as possible. Several books stick out from the others at odd angles. You pick one up curiously. It's got a hexagon and the number 9 written inside it. Another one has a square and the number 2. This must be a puzzle of some kind. You stop as the thudding footsteps grow closer. Figure is so large that it shakes the whole room with every step. You crouch down and wait for it to pass, holding your breath. As soon as an opening appears, you rush across to the next row of bookshelves, searching desperately for the remaining books. A circle with a five, a star with a three. You've got everything you need and head for the door, but figure blocks the way. It turns and starts walking straight at you. It gets close enough. It'll hear your heart beating with terror in your chest. You take off running, hearing the footsteps thundering behind you. It's getting closer and closer until you dive into a wardrobe and hold your breath. Figure walks right up to it, stops, and listens hard. You try all you can to control your heart in your chest. Slow it down. Figure moves on and you race out of the wardrobe. The padlock on the door is easy enough to open now that you've cracked the code. You slam the door behind you. The next 50 rooms are not easy. You almost die to all manner of monsters that hunt you down, hide behind corners and scream in your face, but you make it through. As long as you don't have to see figure again, it'll be okay. But as you stand before room 100, you feel a sickening sense of dread. You know what's going to be on the other side of this door before you even open it. But as it swings open, you have a moment of hope. This doesn't look like a hotel anymore. The wood-paneled walls are gone, replaced by solid metal, a set of metal stairs, and at the top, a green glowing fire escape sign. 
This is it. You're almost free. But then, a familiar set of pounding footsteps fill the room. Figure rounds the corner beneath the fire escape sign, roars and leaps towards you as you try to run away once again. The next few moments are a blur. You run from wardrobe to wardrobe as it pursues you. Desperately trying to control your hammering heart, you run wildly in any direction the monster isn't until all of a sudden you arrive at a control panel. Elevator power. If you can just get this working, you push buttons, following signals on screen, all the while hearing footsteps behind you. Nearly there. It works. The power is back on. You run to the elevator and throw yourself inside, smashing the button. It starts moving. You've done it. You're free. Until you look up. Figure stands above you. It shrieks in your face before swiping at the elevator cable. Your stomach drops out from underneath you as the metal box starts to fall. Down, down, down into the darkness below.